Hey everybody, welcome back to another amazing episode of Lowdown. Your source for arts, music, and entertainment from the Akron area and beyond. I'm your host, Sophia Stokes. And I'm your co-host, Jordan Bai. And we cannot wait for you all to see what we have in store for you on this episode. On this episode, we've got a look at a special butterfly exhibit, live music, and a lot of campus involvement. You don't want to miss it. This episode of Lowdown starts now. On this episode, we have the interview with Lowland Hum that you did, Jordan. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about them? Yeah, so Lowland Hum is a husband-wife duo from Virginia. They play what they call minimalist hush folk. Wow, that sounds really interesting. I can't wait to hear what that sounds like. Let's check it out. I'm Daniel. I'm Lauren. And we're a band called Lowland Hum. We are here from Charlottesville, Virginia, and we're on our Lephonic tour. Lephonic is our fourth album and we're playing songs from that and other songs of ours all over the U.S. And tonight we're here at the Rialto Theater in Akron, Ohio. So we started in 2012 as this band and uh, kind of spent most of the last seven years or so on tour and uh, making music and then playing the songs around. One of our songs on our new album is called Equator Line and it has some stories from our childhood but also, or separate childhoods, I should say, um, but also some kind of like imaginary elements and things that didn't actually happen in our childhoods. But the first verse talks about a kid named Nick who lived down the street from me who did karate and supposedly had a black belt. And he was like older enough that we, that who knows if it was true, like we weren't even in the same elementary school. He was probably in middle school. But uh, there were just all these rumors flying around about Nick that he could like do a split kick and like he could do a split and he could he had a sword and all this stuff and a lot of it's listed in like a, yeah, a lot of the all song of these things are listed. Are but he like, really it really was a real kid that lived down the street from me and it's I, used to, I used to see him like practicing in his front yard walking home from school and I I always kind of felt like if some dog started chasing me Nick would have my back. started this support quiet music thing because we noticed that there are lots of spaces where loud music, well loud music can just be heard more easily because it's loud, mm -hmm. but also <clears throat> you know we want we want there to be space for the kind of full human experience. If everything's kind of to 10 and super high intensity all the time, um, there's not room for all these other parts of being a human being within that context. And, in the music world, festivals and things like that are geared toward loud, kind of like, like you know, just kind of loud music that's really turned to ten. Like I said, we kind of hope that it just makes space for people to think about how they can support the quiet music that they love. And I mean, we, in our own career, noticed that in kind of noisy bar settings or like coffee shops, even people often think are great for quieter music, but it, there's lots of noise there too, so we're just, I think, aware from our own experience of, the, of a real need for places where um, quiet music can be heard and, and spaces that are conducive to listening, and we hope that it's something that helps not only us, but like any other band or artist that's making quiet music. And we like loud music too. There, we're not saying that yeah, there true. shouldn't be loud music, there's just already so many spaces where that music succeeds. Um, and we hope to preserve spaces for other kinds of things. Daniel was doing solo music in the beginning, and 
uh, first he asked me to design his album cover, and then he asked me to sing on a couple songs of doing harmony, and then that turned into more songs, and then we started writing songs together and noticed that our music together was different than his solo music, sonically, so we, um, we became a band called Rolling This next segment features some fun colors and critters. Our member Milos got to go to the Cleveland Botanical Gardens to check out some colorful butterflies. The show is called Amazing Butterflies and features butterflies from Costa Rica. The show teaches people of all ages about butterflies and conserving their natural habitats. Let's see what they have to say. We're here at the Cleveland Botanical Garden where we are currently hosting a show called Amazing Butterflies. And it comes with two components. First, an interactive maze for children so that they can experience life from a butterfly's point of view. As they go through the maze, they get to make choices and face the challenges that a butterfly has from the time it hatches from an egg through its life as a caterpillar and finally when it takes flight as a butterfly. In conjunction with that, we have doubled the amount of butterflies that we normally have in our Costa Rican biome of our glass house. Um, we are doing two live butterfly releases a day, one in late morning and one at two o'clock in the afternoon, where visitors can get up close and personal with the real thing. And one of the reasons we're doing this, we want people to understand how important conservation is. And the butterflies serve as our ambassador. They're beautiful, people are fascinated by them, and by coming to understand the butterfly, they'll understand that the plants that surround the butterfly are equally important and hopefully help preserve this important species and this important ecosystem. The brand new show for us, it opened in late March and it will run until April 28th. Um, we really wanted to do something this spring that uh, would appeal to families, especially families with young children and uh, this was a good opportunity to do this. We have a new director of guest experiences and this is one of the things he brought to the table when he came in um, earlier this year. And in addition to what's going on inside the building with the butterflies, outside we have 10 acres of gardens that are just at the start of their bloom cycle. So we're just seeing the early daffodils and other spring bulbs come up. Um, in a couple of weeks, the tulips will be in full bloom and then throughout the season, we'll have a series of different gardens showcasing beautiful blooms that are native to Northeastern Ohio and that do well here from other parts of the country and the world. The glass houses are appealing to all ages. So you will see, you know, families, you will see couples on dates, you will see, you know, older couples just enjoying themselves and spending some time in nature. And the other thing we do in the glass house is, is our creature feature every afternoon, where you can meet some of the animals of Madagascar, including our chameleons. And um, they are fascinating to meet. I really like um, just walking into the glass house and seeing the multitude of butterflies, especially on a warm spring day when the sun is out. They are very active. You will, you will feel surrounded by butterflies and that's a very cool experience. There's color just kind of flitting by you wherever you go. So it's a great place to come, walk outside. We're in the heart of Cleveland's cultural district, but you wouldn't know that standing here on our terrace this afternoon. Um, so it's a great experience for families. It's a chance to get back and get in touch with nature. And um, we hope that people come out and see it. Wow, that garden had so many beautiful colors. I kind of want to go see it. I know, that looked like so much fun. But right now we have to take a short break. But we'll be right back with more amazing content from our other members. Hello everyone, my name's Kyle Glockner and welcome to another episode of 300 Seconds of Sci- Wait, this isn't- They saying it? Nah. That's a negative, Chief. We're almost there. Wait, hold on, go back. There it is.
You're watching ZTV. Welcome back, everyone. Now, before we get into our next video, make sure to stay tuned to the end of this episode to find out about our live show coming up at the end of the semester. We love to get in the chance to bring you live content last semester. For now, let's take a look at our video from Remember Penny. I'm Glenn Miller. Um, I'm Aaron. We're both owners of Whiskerton Lighting here in Akron, Ohio. Business started in my basement in North Hill about three years ago, three and a half years ago now. We off with just an idea of building a light fixture out of a piece of ductwork that I brought home from work. Uh, work in the heating and air conditioning industry. And so I called up my friend Glenn. We've been roommates. We hung out for a long time and was like, hey, I really want to try to build a light fixture out of this. That's kind of where the business took off. And at first we just did lights out of ductwork. That was it. There was nothing else. So now we make lights out of everything from kegs, bottles. Uh, we wire up vintage lanterns. Our skateboard lamps are super popular. Everything from floor lamps, table lamps, to big, huge industrial fixtures, kinds of different stuff. We started working with Akron Glassworks, and so now we're really getting into doing some glass shades and pieces, which were really hot seller today at the market, because nobody had ever seen them before. And so collaborating with them has been a huge thing. And then the event was put on by the 720 Market. The 720 Market, uh, they host shows in North Canton mostly at Gervasi Vineyards. They do a lot um, in downtown North Canton. Um, they're super organized, a super successful group. Um, nice having uh, a markets, a group that that's what they specialize in is doing markets. We would, you know, we got Barrio here and Square Scholarly being able to have the local food trucks here. And our friend Rachel was DJing and it was, you know, just a lot of friends that we've met through doing our business that we've met mostly in tents and bringing them in our building and, you know, turning this into a space. A lot of times people might drive past this, this building and be like, oh, there's that old building, it looks condemned. And we wanted to, like, bring some love to the building and be like, hey, this, this building can really be something. Yeah. I mean, we haven't really had a lot of events here, so this is by far the best yeah. thing. We, we've had a couple, but like, this is by far like way bigger than anything, anything that we've done. Today we kind of wanted to celebrate being here for a year and kind of promote this as like a, a maker space. Since we've come here, we've, we've got a, a bunch more makers in the building and we're kind of trying to like change this building into a place for like a bunch of makers that people can come to and just kind of help see all the different art. So yeah, this is a call out to all Akron artists. Uh, if you're looking for a vendor space, the Southfield building in Akron, uh, we would love to have, have you as long as there's a space open. We're trying to get as many artists and vendors, uh, artists in here that, to try to build a community. Next, our member Kristen got to film the spring performance the University of Akron Dance Company put on. I always love watching these dance segments. It looks like so much fun. I can't wait to see all the hard work they have put in on stage. Let's check out these awesome dancers and the show at EJ Thomas Hall. I am Kaya. I'm Dom. I'm Olivia. I'm Kylie. And we're part of the University of Akron's Dance Company. Now, at UADC, it's technically a class and what you do is at the beginning of the semester you audition it's usually faculty uh, choreographed and then they usually bring in a uh, guest choreographer as well so then auditions happen and then if you get picked then you have rehearsals twice a week usually for four hours and we just rehearse all semester until it's time for the show and we are a ballet based program so you'll see us with the pink tights and the black <laughs> leotard and the slick back hair and if you don't apply to those standards, you could easily not get a part. So they're very strict on maintaining that ballet. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also good. It just, auditioning in general, just prepares you for the real world. And I feel like this program does a really good job with that since we have to audition for like every single show that we're in. So her, 
which is Dom's piece, <laughs> is about feminism and how um, basically people don't want to identify as feminist um, because of how some people think feminists are portrayed. Right. Um, <clears throat> focusing on equality rather than how one gender is better than the other and how um, often it gets morphed into different meanings and subjects when all it is is equality between a man and a woman. But you can be a feminist and not agree with someone. And that's what it's about. The piece five by Catherine Meredith is about the different stages of grief. So there's five people in the dance and we each have a different stage. For example, depression, that's just one of them. And basically the whole dance is we're working together to get over a tragedy or whatever happened in your life. And by the end, I think as a whole, we reach an acceptance point and that's the whole dance. So the piece that I'm in is called Gravity. It's, it's very dynamic and it's probably one of the coolest pieces I've ever been in my entire life. There's no deep meaning to it. It's all just movement and the effects of kind of gravity on the body. That's honestly about the extent of it. So I'm in a piece called Trigger Warning and it really, it makes you really uncomfortable and cringy and I'm actually not dancing, I'm speaking, which is a very different experience for me. Um, and it just proves how versatile you have to be in the arts. You have to be experienced in everything. Um, you can't just do one thing. And so it was a huge challenge to just do something I'm not comfortable with. Dance in general, I feel like it's not always about the movement. You have to make the audience believe that you're actually feeling that emotion on stage. So whenever I go into any pieces that I'm dancing, I want to make the audience feel something or just react to my dancing and my emotion somehow. So For me, like doing my makeup really puts me in the zone because <clears throat> it almost helps you become a different person. It just helps you build the confidence you need to be able to portray these uncomfortable roles. Yeah, I feel like I stretch and just breathe and try to relax as much as I can just because you want nerves, like good nerves, but you don't want to be overly nervous. So I feel like you just have to relax and like really get in the zone before you go on stage. My mom always says that um, if you're scared, that's a good sign and that you should keep doing it. I think she's right. <laughs> wow, that was some great dancing. But man, I was so tired just watching all of that. Yeah, same here. I wish we could have seen more, but we will be right back with some more great interviews after this short commercial break. It is a period of civil war. 300 spaceships striking from a hidden base have won their first victory against the evil galactic pseudoscience. During the battle, 300 spies managed to steal secret plans to the pseudoscientist's ultimate weapon, the Internet, a global computer network with enough power to deceive an entire planet. Pursued by the pseudoscientist's sinister agents, the producers race home aboard their starship, custodians of the stolen plans that can save their team and restore knowledge to the galaxy. Watch 300 Seconds of Science on Channel 45-1 and follow them on social media at ZTV 300 Seconds of Science. And now she's just gone. She's banished. And you just let it happen. You won't even make you won't, you won't even make your mistake for it. You won't even apologize. Everything I am is because of you, Dad. What are you guys doing? Recording a sketch. We have to film the promo. When does it do? Tomorrow. Oh well, let's get going. Come on. Oh, but can we get food first? Hey, let's check out this park. To find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. You're watching ZTV.
Welcome back, everybody. Up next, we're involving Greek life in this episode of Lowdown. You're in Greek life, right, Sophia? Yes, I am. And Greek life puts on a fundraiser every year called Songfest. Can you tell us a little bit more about the purpose of Songfest? Of course. So Songfest is a Greek life-wide event where every chapter makes up a song and dance routine, and it's sort of like a dance competition. All proceeds and donations go towards camp quality, and it's a really good way for the Greek community to reach out. That sounds awesome. The theme of Songfest this year was movie soundtracks. Let's take a look at all the hard work Greek Life put together. Hi everyone, Sophia from Lowdown here. Today we're taking a look at some of the performances from Songfest 2019. Songfest is an every year event where Greek Life chapters on campus raise money for camp quality. This year's theme for Songfest was movie soundtracks. Each chapter chose a couple songs out of their movie choice and created a mashup dance. I Lots of work goes into these Songfest performances. Many chapters practice for weeks leading up to the event. A really difficult element of Songfest is that participants have to sing the lyrics. Each performance at Songfest was anywhere from three to eight minutes long. Lots of work goes into these Songfest performances. Many chapters practice for weeks leading up to the event. Congratulations to our first place winners, Fraternity Phi Gamma Delta and Sorority Delta Gamma. Ladies and gents, this is the moment you waited for. Searching in the dark, your sweat soaking through the floor. Taking a breath, stealing your mind, and all that was real is left behind. Now we will come back home, and we will come back Overall, Songfest 2019 was a super fun event. If you are interested in joining Greek Life, make sure to follow A Day in Greek Life on Instagram and keep up with the chapters. Check out www.uakron.edu slash FSL to learn more about recruitment in the fall. There was so much variety in this episode. There really was, and I wish we had time for more, but unfortunately, that's all the content we have for this episode of Lowdown. 
Tune in next time for our live show for more great interviews with artists from around the Akron area. During our live show, you will see Jordan, myself, and some of our team members premiering live. We will also have a live performance from a local artist. Make sure to tune in to our live show on May 2nd at 8 p.m. on channel 45-1 and on our YouTube channel. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for updates, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch all of our episodes, all at ZTV Lowdown. Once again, I'm your host, Sophia Stokes. And I'm your co-host, Jordan Fye. And that's all for this episode on Lowdown. This program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. Do you want to gain experience in video production, professional social media, or working with real clients? Visit the UA School of Communications online or follow us on social media to learn more. ZTV, make media, make a difference.